So I have a box. And within this box, I have more boxes. Actually, there are three boxes. This is a, this is a lens. But what's important is this box. Well, you've seen the title, this is a box of the box camera, Panasonic. Ooh. I mean, it's even lighter than I thought as well. I know it's going to be lighter than a lot of mirrorless camera, but yeah, it's lighter than I thought. I don't know, should I compare this to set cam, but you really can't help to compare it to a set cam. Actually similar, similar size and Wait, of course they look really similar as well. Well, I mean, set cam don't invent a box shaped camera, but they, other than box shape, they, are, they really look really similar. I mean, like a uh, red camera, box shape, a uh, lot of other cinema camera, box shape, but they look really similar. Amazing is that this is a full frame camera, this is micro four foot, and they weight almost the same. Of course, I should compare this to a full frame Set cam, but I don't have one, so there you go. Well, what's the other boxes? This is just the lens, 24 to 70, f2.8, Lumix S lenses, lenses, lens. Because this would be really obvious that this used Panasonic L mount. So in fact, what is this camera? Um, not this one. Um, how do you understand this camera? Basically, this is a box shaped S1X. You can tell from the name, the name may be S1X, basically a box a boxy S1X. What does it have? It's exactly the same as S1X, especially the sensor. The sensor is the same sensor as, as S1X. So it do basically the same thing. It do 6K, 5.9K, 25, 30 FPS, and then you can do 4K up to 50 or 60 FPS. But if you want to do 420 10-bit internally, this can do it as well. It's the same as S1X, it can do 4K, 25 or 30p, but you can also do raw output, raw output to uh, Atomos or uh, Blackmagic Wheel Assist or something like that. Is it called Wheel Assist? I think. I don't know, have I mentioned before in my video that I think a uh, camera like the S1X it is so video oriented? Why don't they remove the shutter? Just make it into a video camera. But this is basically a S1X without a shutter and without in body stabilization. That's it, and this is what you get. BS BS one H. So BS one H actually in this angle it looks like a Bluetooth speaker, but this is the front of the camera. So in the front, of course you can see the this is the L mount, and you got the full frame sensor. Wow, and it's quite interesting. There is a on off button. Well, this is not the interesting thing. The interesting thing is there's quite a lot of different customizable button and his, th there's no marking at all. A lot of other cameras will mark it like one, two, three, four or something, but yeah, no marking at all. Quite interestingly, there's a lock button here so you can lock things. In fact, you can lock all the buttons or you can set it up in the menu. Now I should mention the previously they have released a B GH1, yes, BGH1, which is a micro four foot version of this. But the amazing thing is that both camera actually almost the same size. The micro four foot one and this full frame uh, BS1H, exactly the same width and length. It's just this one is just a little bit deeper. Actually, just a little, really just a little bit, 0 0.8 millimeters deeper. Oh, there is a tally line. And then there is a status light here because there is no display at all on this camera. On the camera body, it's just a few LED lights. And around the body, you have two uh, tripod thread, but there's loads of other tripod mounts around the camera. The good thing is that you can customize anything on this camera. You can get your own grip. You can get plastic, you can get a uh, wooden grip from different brand you can get you can use one grip two grip on the side or on the top anything you like and because this kind of production you need a lot of accessories so there are loads of bounting points you can have especially on the top you can have a monitor you can have transmitter or even a mic you can have handle but then there is a horseshoe on it as well 
at first, uh, the last time when they released a BGH1, I find it's quite hilarious to see a horseshoe on this kind of cinema camera. But then this is useful because, well, when you get other kind of cinema camera, a lot of people have to add their own horseshoe anyway. So, and also you can add the, that accessory with a really long model name that you can plug in XLR mic with mixer. On this side, there is the badge and also there is this, this is, this looks really much like S1 actual as well. This is the ventilation fan input and then there's another one on the other side as well. So yeah, this is really much like S1 X. It got, it got a ventilation fan, cooling fan. And here you got dual card slot, you got SD card. So you don't have to get those expensive K XQ, R, D, Q, uh, CF Express card. So the back, this is for the battery. This is one of those kind of um, Panasonic camcorder battery, but things got Interesting from here because there is a oh USB C, <laughs> lots of interesting USB C and HDMI, but then there is a SDI output as well, and you can use SDI output and HDMI output simultaneously. There is a time code in out and gen lock in as well. So these are for bigger production when you have multiple camera, you have to sync them all perfectly. Well, if you are using run and gun, you can use this kind of consumer my and consumer headphone and there is a ethernet port so with this ethernet port it you can also provide power as well so with the ethernet port you can do live stream you can remote control this camera from hundreds of meters away and also provide power so when you're doing that you don't you only have to plug in one ethernet cable and here you got the dc in this is a bob standard 12 volt dc in just for a very simple setup i just add a camera top mic on top and you need an external display or else you can't even access the menu to set up the camera so this is the screen from the camera so the first time first thing you have to set the clock so this look exactly like other panasonic mirrorless camera from my version, look at that, 0 0.1a. Don't even watch that. Alpha is not even beta. You really got almost everything that a Panasonic camera, other camera, Panasonic camera would have. Even like you can set the focusing ring to linear or non-linear. Q menu. Yeah, you can set up your Q menu like other Panasonic camera. Besides using a display, you can also try to use their app, but is it the same app as their camera? App, and we all know how good usually these camera apps are. Uh, this one is not really that bad. It's just a little bit slow and then there's not really a lot of features. You can't have any waveform or whatever at all. When I'm at it, it's just no comparison to the Zcam app. The Zcam app can set up every single feature in the Zcam and it can act like a few monitor as well because it has all the waveform whatever false color feature fortunately the panasonic app the delay is actually quite good it's comparable to hdmi output one thing maybe not as common is that this camera this similar camera actually got quite usable autofocusing because this is the same focusing as s1h s5 the s5 i have been using for a long time yeah, and this is the, the same AI enable AF. The, the thing is, it recognizes the face. Now it recognizes recognize my face and my eyes. Even when I turn around, it still recognizes a human head. Does it recognize a head? Yeah, I think it recognizes a head. And sometimes even if it don't recognize a head, it recognizes a human body. So yeah. But then this is still the Panasonic DFDAF focusing. So yeah, it's kind of, uh, yeah, you know, you, you might already heard about how Panasonic focusing system is, uh, it works most of the time, but sometimes it just don't know what it's doing. So I feel like that's not much worth testing this focusing system because it's exactly the same. And then 
this is what Panasonic AF system is that when tested, it looks like it's whoa, working brilliantly. But when you actually use it for a month and then you will find out instance that it just stopped working for whatever reason. Well, I have been using S5, not a huge problem. It is what it is. Another really important feature of this camera is nice streaming. As it support RTSP streaming, you just have to plug in an Ethernet cable, connect to your computer or through a router or a switch. And within the camera menu, you turn on the streaming obviously, and then you can set the quality as well. In there, look for the IP address it is using. Then on your computer, I'm using OBS here, just put in the IP address and using this URL without any extra hardware, you have this really high quality streaming. I mean, when Panasonic released their micro forward camera and then later they are slowly leading to video. The camera like this Panasonic S5, especially the Panasonic S1X is great for video. It is a Netflix approved camera as well. So it's kind of like, well, nobody buy S1X for photos. So what is the mechanical shutter in there for actually? Why not they release something that is just for video? Now this will cost US dollars for 3,500. Um, it is around the same price as S1X right now, but this is actually cheaper than when S1X was new. S1X released as 4,000. Uh, US dollars camera, this is 3500 a little bit cheaper than S1H and even more interesting is that the Z-Cam uh, E2F6 basically the same as this um, full frame 6K camera the Z-Cam is actually more expensive than this and that is really interesting so yeah, this is it box style S1H, B, S1H and this is the purely video S1H kind of makes sense